Greetings and welcome to Risky Business, keeping you legal in five minutes or less. I'm Idra Anderson Bush, SABOR Vice President of Risk Management and General Counsel. Today's topic is one that we haven't needed to discuss for some time now, but I'm excited to say that it has re-arisen as a necessary topic of discussion for licensees, multiple offers and how they should be handled. The market is definitely picking up in the greater San Antonio metropolitan area, and a question I increasingly receive is what are an agent's obligations in a multiple offer scenario? Knowing the ethical and regulatory rules regarding multiple offers will always manage expectations and lessen the occurrence of hurt feelings. As a listing agent, the most important thing to know is that it is always the seller's choice as far as how multiple offers will be handled. It is your obligation as their agent to define the available options for handling multiple offers and then let the seller direct you as to which option she would like to pursue. There are really three typical options for the multiple offer situation. First, the seller may choose to simply select one offer and pursue negotiations with that particular buyer. In this option, the other buyers would be held in a little bit of limbo, but that's okay. Second, the seller can choose to reject all offers using the TAR seller's invitation to buyer to submit new offer and ask each buyer for their highest and best offer. Or finally, a seller may choose to simply accept one of the offers right off the bat and reject the others. Note that in none of those scenarios is the seller required to prioritize the offers based on the timing of receipt. In other words, there is no first come, first served. Now, as I said, it is indeed the seller's choice regarding which mechanism to use in handling the multiple offers. However, there are some ethical concerns about which the listing agent must be careful. The most common concern is whether the listing agent has a duty to disclose the existence of multiple offers. The Realtor Code of Ethics states in Standard of Practice 1-15 that a listing agent may be required to disclose the existence of other offers if the seller has given approval for the listing agent to do so. In such an instance, the disclosure must be made. And not only must the disclosure be made to one of the potential buyers, but it must be made to all. This is because TREC rules imposes a duty of fairness on real estate licensees, so you must treat all parties fairly. The next concern asks whether a listing agent has an obligation to disclose that a competing office offer originated within the same office. Standard of Practice 1-15 goes on to state that if indeed the seller has authorized the listing agent to disclose the multiple offers, then if the listing agent is then asked whether the offer is an in-house offer, the listing agent must make that disclosure as well. Finally, there's always a major concern about whether or not the listing agent may or should disclose the terms of competing offers. My advice here is to always keep the terms of competing offers confidential. The law and rules are silent on this issue. Certainly, the only time a seller is prohibited from disclosing the terms of an offer is if the seller has signed a confidentiality agreement, and that is exceedingly rare. But remember the duty of fairness I just spoke about that's contained in track rules. We learn from that provision that all parties must be treated fairly. Because it is virtually impossible to disclose the terms of an offer in such a way that all parties are treated fairly, the best way to stay out of trouble is to refrain from disclosing the terms of any offer. So remember, in multiple offers, the best way to protect all parties is to be fair, be honest, and allow your client to drive the decision making. Provide your clients with a clear description of their options and then secure your client's directions in, writings, in writing. Be sure to manage all parties' expectations from the beginning and leverage what is typically a sticky situation into a great deal for your client. I hope this has been helpful to you. Be sure to visit the SABOR website for answers to your other legal questions and don't forget about the TAR legal hotline. I'm Idra Anderson-Bush. Take care.